You're listening to the VR Verse, a virtual reality podcast where two friends talk all things VR. Now let's join your hosts, the VR Realm and Doctor Oculus. Hello, everyone. Welcome to episode 32 of the VR Verse. Just me and my lovely host, Doctor Oculus, again. We've got a few things to talk about. Um, yeah, I didn't go to Gamescom, did you? Nope, and I've even like kept my eye off everything because of every game I knew that was there is games I want to experience without getting other people's opinions first. So I've just like right. I've seen what was there, obviously on pictures, but I've just ignored everybody's content and comments about it because I just want to. They're all games I want to be first-hand impressions of. Big time, yeah. Um, I I've been watching the socials over the last few days, and I've just been like. God, I should have gone to Gamescom. Like, I, I really, the FOMO has kicked in in a big bad way. Um, but I, I think I truly did miss out on a, on an epic mm. week um, by not going to Gamescom this year. Um, I, it's that much that I'm like, D- should I start booking hotels for next year? Like, I really wish I was there. Yeah. Um, and there was lots of great stuff on show, and like you, I'm like. Everybody's got a Batman video out today. I don't want to watch it though, because no. I want to play Batman. <laughs> so, yeah, it's um, there's been a lot of interesting, good things. There was a massive presence there, and it was very, very impressive. The uh, the people that got it all together. I think it was um, there was a few different sort of people behind it, but. The um, impact reality had a big part of it, and mm-hmm. you know, got a few other chunks. Like it was, there's a lot of fun stuff there. Um, some stuff I've already a little bit tried, um, but then other stuff I was just like, ah, I kind of want to play that. Mm-hmm. So I guess we're just gonna have to wait for ourselves to to play them. To be fair, though, a good but, yeah. a good chunk of them are due by the end of this year, which this year looks like a a mad time. It, yeah. Because isn't Batman due... Wait, is Batman next year, or is it like October this year? October this year. Yeah. Was it November so this year? It's definitely June. June. So that's all right. Um, the Last Stand. Can't wait to try that. That's going to be like Space Pirate Arena, except you don't need an arena. So, mm-hmm. yeah, I'm I'm good for that. Um... Yeah, just so many different, so many different games, and I, I really wish I'd seen them. There was one; it was um, World in the Wall, or Wall World, or something. Mm. That that's just come out of nowhere. I saw that; I was just like, I I want that more than anything. Like, it's, yeah. it's going to be a live stream of me facing a wall, but I don't care. <laughs> I, I I so want to to play that. So that's come out of the the woodwork. Yeah, lots of great things from Gamescom, and I don't want to see any of it until it's in my hands. Yeah. I've seen some more people talking about Behemoth, but I haven't watched any of the videos that when the group got their hands on it like months and months ago, because I'm like, I don't want any of that spout. <laughs> yeah. When they release that, I might start playing Saints and Sinners, because, you know, I'm always seven million years behind everything <laughs> so they'll they'll release that game and i'll I'll start playing the first one they made mm. have you been playing anything interesting over the last month um i have there's a few different ones um i started playing a game called wind and leaves oh yeah which total sleeper for me like i just it was in my library, and I, I thought, yeah, this is fine. I'll, I'll, I'll play it one day. And I started playing it, and I was like, where has this game been all my life? From what I can tell, based on the movement system, I'm willing to put money on the fact that it was a PSVR game yeah. that got brought to the PC. But it's just stunning. So I've got it in my library. I think, I've, I think at one point, either in the Steam sale or maybe on... CD keys or something at it, and it was like two pounds something. And I grabbed it, put it in yeah. my library, then never even installed it. It's one of those games. <laughs> yeah, I, I just that was it. I was, I, so I've been playing that, and that just absolutely blew me away. I I couldn't believe it, and I forgot about it until you literally just asked me that question. I was like, 
oh yeah, I was playing that game. Um, so yeah, absolutely, that has really come out of the out of nowhere and and really impressed me. So that was good. Um, I've been UEVRing the chained together with a friend, so that's been taking up sort of one of my streams a week. Mm-hmm. That. Is- is uh, what you expect it to be it's the game but then modified and the aim is to complete the game in vr i don't know if anybody else has done that yet but i want to do that so i've been uploading the videos and stuff so i will be able to say i've played the entire thing in vr so that's something um <laughs> you ever played wizard's legacy no see wizard's legacy that's <laughs> The problem with the any game that says the word wizards in the title is I kind of lump them all together under one banner of wizards and I just <laughs> forget which one's which. Yeah. Um so yeah, it's all just it's all a blur, but Wizards Legacy is a game where you it's a roguelike game and you put gems on your hand that grant you certain powers, and you do gestures with your hand to conjure a spell, and then you attack things, and you, like typical roguelikes, you run it, you die, you advance and grow and get stronger and run it further and further mm-hmm. and further. Um, which, it's it's a good, solid baseline. Does need a bit of work, but I get it. I, I sent the stream over to the devs and said, okay, this works, this doesn't, and and, you know, um i i enjoyed it and i look forward to them going away working on it a little bit and then coming back see i don't know about you but i'm games like that i don't mind playing in their infancy yeah but then there are other games that i'm like i want the finished experience i don't want the early one so like if they released batman into early access i want to touch it mm-hmm. There's no point yeah. i want the complete game i don't want the the, the early version um and things like that whereas games like uh mannequin i'll play that for for 20 minutes that's fine but then uh, i i don't i probably won't go back to that game which is why i don't like early versions so i'll play the version i have when i have it and then i I won't go back to it but this is one that i've played it and i'll check on it in a year's time or something and so when i was seeing you streaming it i was watching i was thinking another rogue like another I know. Yeah, but you remember you hated them, and then you fell in love with them, and now you're falling out of love with them again. No, I still enjoy them. I just think there's too many now. It's a bit like rhythm games, wave shooters. Well, when was wave shooters? Then it went to rhythm games, and now it seems like rogue like is where everyone's going. It's. The the problem that we have is that a lot of it's just been done before now. Like mm-hmm. at this point in time, VR is still quite quite uh, in its infancy, really. But we've had people making games for so long that it's hard to be unique yeah. anymore. So we're now just retreading the same ground. It was like the Wii. The Wii, it was like, oh, we can move our hands now. We have a remote control. What can we do with that? And people got kind of creative, and then we just ended up falling into categories mm-hmm. until it was just yet another golf game or whatever. Yeah. Uh, and it's, it's, it's happening with VR. We are just falling into categories of, okay, now we're putting things in boxes and saying, you belong in that camp, you belong in that camp. And then every now and again, somebody will come in and, you know, make um, synapse. And then you're like, oh, this is dope. And then they'll go back to just being another roguelike first person shooter. Um, so it's, yeah, it, it's one of those things, but people are going to come along, they are going to captivate you. It was a roguelike, but it was with wizards. It just didn't have guns, I guess. So, That's what I mean, you know. I think watching it, I thought it's a ro- another roguelike, but like my view on a roguelike now is you have to do something different and being a wizard and doing hand based gesture spells uh, is something different to what than, like you said, just ease a gun last as long as you can. You have to make the, the Venn diagram of. Um, VR and grab something from a category that somebody else hasn't really mashed in yeah. before, I guess. In fact, I'm going to look at Synapse, look at um, 
Ghost, Ghost Signal. Fogland put a story in there. So people yeah. tried these are things that people have tried things a bit different in the genre. Um I mean Ghost Signal I didn't play that until it came out on PlayStation VR two and I was just like, Why have I waited this long to play this game? <laughs> I loved it on the Quest and then barely touched the PSVR 2 version. I, I, like many things, I play, stream the first few hours and then move on and hate myself and say, I'll get to that one day and then never do. Another one I've so, recently yeah. played, Compound. It's, it's a shooter, but the visual style makes it stand yes. out. It is something a bit different. And also, it's 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 not exactly new. I think I bought that for book for Christmas about three years ago. I think you bought me on PC quite a few it years ago as well. Oh, yeah. So, I've bought it. I always a bridesmaid, never a bride with that one. I've bought it for a couple of people. I, I don't own it. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm like, oh, yeah, this game's great. Have you played it? No. How do I know it's great that I keep buying it for people? Yeah, everybody else seems to like it. Mm. Uh, I'll get to it one day, but... Just, just one day. I've got a million other things to do on my to-do list, so... Um, yeah. Yeah, I'd never played it on PC then. Um, the dev reach out and said, I don't want to love it. Like, would I be interested in reviewing it on PlayStation? I was like, yeah, yeah, okay. And then, now I've installed it on PC because I want to go and try it on PC as well. And okay. So, I will get around to playing it on PC. Again. Yeah, I'll, I'll one day. Yeah. Anything else for you? You you're normally quite busy. Yeah, it's been a bit warm though, hasn't it? But over the last month, but I took the chance to jump into an early preview of um, Hello Kitten, uh, Exploding Kittens, Hello Kittens, <laughs> Exploding Kittens. We are with the devs. Oh. And they've done some magic. Really, yeah. you asshole! I want to play that game so bad. They've pulled some wizardry with that and like is it shell no it's um saber interactive who did okay uh, mud runner and things i, don't know why I got shell games in my head for that one but they've done really good with it they've done the can't say a thing about it but they've done the mechanics are really they've managed to make a card game not just gone with you've got the cards like they could have it would have worked sit around the table and play the card game the card game is highly successful but instead mm -hmm. you get like a a treasure chest with like ga gacha bond balls in so now it's your turn you take a gacha bond ball out it falls out the chest and then you've you choose to take it out the chest and it'll pop up and it'll have a model of the ability like of the card basically of the cat from the card it just follows the same rules but they've made it vr which i thought yeah. i can't wait this I could could have easily sat there and just made it a card game sat around the table and played a card game but they've took it more interactive they've made it immersive which yeah. is fantastic i i don't like pvp games and i don't like playing games with strangers that is a pvp game i will play with the strangers all fucking night i'm yeah. telling you i love exploding kittens um so i cannot wait for that to to be released do we have a release date on that yet i don't think so I'm going to head on over to the VRRealm.com and see if we have any information. There's a preview, like a big preview icon on there. Not just fall this year, is all they told me. Yeah. Prize to be confirmed. But uh, you can wish list now, which I already did. Yeah. Looks impressive. Yeah. I think there's, I just had a couple of hours in there with three of the devs that basically explained it to me. Um, well, explained the decisions to me, and then we jumped in and and they kick my ass every single time. Ah, <laughs> uh, they should have got me in. I'll I'll give them a run for the money. Tell them, tell them you know a guy. I don't know. That's good to know. That is good to know. Um, so yeah, fall is 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 just coming, I guess. I played on point as well. I know a book in the chat is um like me, a massive point blank fan, and it's basically just point blank. I saw that. I, I I like the look of it, and I feel like I could get the wife in it. To the point where well. you're actually holding either the blue or pink G-Con gun in the game as well. It's basically just... It is. Basically, it's just point blank. Blatantly obvious. Yeah. yeah. It's really... It's point blanking everything but name. 
Yeah, which is called on, the... on point. It's getting it's close. It's got half. Hopefully, the creators of Point Blank aren't very litigious. But yeah, it's really it's fun. There's it's in early access. There's still spots to add extra levels in. So mm-hmm. I'm hoping over the time to do add extra stuff in. I mean, I've not managed it's, to complete it's... it on hard mode yet. I've with my free lives. I'm getting close, but. You see, this is another one of the I I want to play that game, but I'm if if I played it now, I probably wouldn't go back. Mm. So yeah, I want to um, get that first. I think about twenty four levels at the moment, like mini games. But I can't like the the block grid it gives you where it chooses the random ones for you to play. That's got about thirty two spaces on some possibly another eight levels coming. Yeah. Six levels, no, eight levels. I was right the first time. But that's fun. Good news. I mean, it's one I've always wanted. I always say I like gun games will part well into VR, and that's just to prove because Point, I don't know how many hours I lost to Point Blank on the PlayStation 1 <laughs> with a light gun. Yeah. So. That's, that's a genre that's underutilized. Light gun games would be perfect for conversion. It was something that I was hoping we would see from the flat to VR people. Yeah. But, um... Hopefully you see it. Yeah. Oh, Left 4 Dead, I want. Yeah. Oh, I wanted Left 4 Dead. Not Left 4 Dead, yeah, sorry. In a big bad way. House of the Dead. I, I don't, House of the Dead is, don't sorry. Even need, don't even need to be in the world. Like, it doesn't need to be, like, full-on VR. I will take a screen... Do you know, like all the Ivanovich games, mm-hmm. where you can be like sat in a car and you will just have a screen in front of you in like I can't take this kind of mode. Mm-hmm. Um, I, give me that. Give me how's the dead in that where I can just use a controller like a gun and I'm I'm sold. I'm yeah. in. I'll take it. I mean, say, I think it's mad because Sega put so many random titles of VR, like Somebody Amigo, which I love. On the quest and mm. Space Channel Five, which wasn't so great, but and you like. I guess we need to buy all of the Sega games. But you got House of Dead. You've got Virtual Cop. Like you've got so many. <laughs> you had like two of the best light gun games out there. <laughs> yeah, that's perfect for VR. <laughs> or a PS, uh, a PlayStation One emulator that's VR compatible. Because mm. I will play Die Hard all day. The Die Hard trilogy game was awesome. Yeah. Um, Die Hard one was a a, a, a shooting adventure kind of game. Die yeah. Hard two was a light gun, and Die Hard three was driving. And mm-hmm. I was just, I every single one of them was a win for me. So I absolutely, I would totally do that in VR as well. Even janky ass graphics, I don't care. Some great, some like you said, just like. They just lend themselves perfectly, and yeah. oh, gee, we don't get them. <laughs> I did play Dig this month. Have you have you seen anything of Dig VR? Apart from we are stream. Yeah, I got an early version of that. That's very very fun. It's exactly what you want it to be. Just pimping around in a digger, digging holes for reasons, and then if you're me, you try and escape the world in a digger. Um, so that that was um superb i don't know how much i can say about that so i'll just say that i enjoyed the first level that i did play on stream and um, we'll hopefully do a deeper dive later on in life i have access to the larger scale game i just i want to stream it but when i play it yeah so this is something else that seems to be a boom of what work for vr like simulator games Oh, I, every simulator game is i've said this a million times I, I don't care if you were going to put simulator on the end you should make a VR version. Mm-hmm. It should happen. Everything. Treasure Hunter Simulator. I'll walk around with a metal detector digging up coins. Like, yeah, give me it. I want it. Just give me that card, card, card detailing simulator. Yeah, okay. I'll, I'll have a polishing machine and make a car shiny. Mm-hmm. Do it. I want it. Lawnmower Simulator. Um, I, I hear bad things, but I'll do it. Um, yeah, anything simulator should be VR. Yeah. Every single time. Delete. Like, I mean, I don't know how many hours I've got a power simulator now on, on the quest, but I know by the time I was reviewing it, I had about 
32 hours in it when I was reviewing it. And there's been all the still DLC since then. Really. Still need to do more. I had not touched the Alice in Wonderland DLC yet. All the jobs on there are massive oh. as well. There's no like little job on the Alice in Wonderland one. They're all huge. Yeah. So that's definitely something I want to be uh, want to be trying out. So so much VR, so little time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a lot to to come as well before the end of the year. <laughs> Like there is. Everything's um, hitting around September, October, November. It's going to be it's, madness again. It's crazy for VR, and it's a crazy time for me, kind of personally as well. Mm -hmm. Because I'm now in full ramp up ready for MetaConnect. Mm -hmm. That's going to steal a, a week of my life. I don't know what I'm going to do with that. Um, then I get back from MetaConnect, and I'm umming and gnawing as to whether I'm going to go to EGX in October. So that's another sort of big event that's going on. And then after that, I go on holiday to Germany in November. So that's another week of my life that's going to be consumed <laughs> by personal crap. And then somewhere in between all of that, I need to figure out a time and place to play all of the games that have recently been announced or teased at Gamescom and things. I will not be very busy for the last... Well, depends on Saturday. I might not be very busy for the rest of the year because I could be sp spending money on Oasis tickets. Oh, God. what? So I saw a meme on the internet where somebody took a video of somebody saying two and a half thousand. Oh, it's Carl Pilkington, like two and a half grand. Like, are you crazy? Two and a half grand. Are, are, are the seats really two and a half grand? No. There, that, I mean, I know like Jay Z and Beyonce can get crazy with like a hundred odd pound per ticket. Well, but... These reckon it could be up to one hundred and forty pound a ticket, but I'll pay it. See you, Oasis. Yeah, that's. It's one of those things that you may not get another chance. Mm -hmm. They might stab each other mid tour. So I guess that's what I mean. I'm going to buy tickets, and I've got to stay friends until next year. So. <laughs> It makes you wonder. It makes you wonder what's happened. Mm. Money. That's what happened. You reckon they've mm -hmm. just got that broke? I don't think they need the money, but Noel's fine though. Surely he's he's intelligent and talented. But outside of that, my only breakups between the games are live music. I've got four more gigs left this year, and then I'm done for the year. Just four. Yeah. What could there possibly be to, to watch? Um, just random bands. Peter Hook, who was in New Order, and Joy Division doing a New Order and Joy Division album in full. Um, okay. I've had Scouting for Girls. And then... We are scientists. Did you not realise they were still going? Do they still release music, or are they still just playing Elvis Ain't Dead that, like a thousand times? They still released. Well, they released an album this year, early this year. Oh, well, I, I don't pay attention to music anymore, so I'm just like, I remember them. They released a song one time that I, I bought on iTunes. Yeah, We Are Scientists, and then The Twang of in December. Be fun. Yeah, good times. It's all good. They're the only just distractions I'm going to have. And, um, has there anything else been distracting you this month then? Um, just the weather. And then last weekend just being Black Mifu Kong, which is unreal, but I haven't tried it yet in un in the UE <laughs> injector. Yeah. A lot of people have, have probably wanted to. Mm -hmm. uh, I imagine it's quite thirsty performance wise. Yeah. So, yeah, that'll be a killer. I did manage to get Thrasher working the other day. Um, turns out it's just fine, I guess. Um, I didn't play much because I thought, okay. So I tried to stream Thrash Thrasher, for anybody that doesn't know. I tried to stream Thrasher, and you hit the stream button, and then you press the go and play the game button, and then it just doesn't load. But every time I'm not streaming, it works. Hmm. Which makes me think I could potentially get into the game, then press the stream button, 
and see if it works. I think that's what I did when I streamed it. I should probably feed that back to them. Mm. <laughs> that that's that's a bug, not a feature. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so I, I may have to do that. But yeah, I was I started playing it and it was kind of fun, but I wasn't a massive I I didn't hate um the Bumper. The bug game. Yeah, that one. I didn't hate that. I just sucked at it and I was like, eh, I don't like this. Whereas Thrasher seems a bit easier. Yeah, definitely. In the early days anyway. Yeah. Um, you're just kind of pointing a dragon around places, trying not to hit stuff. Mm-hmm. So yeah, it looks pretty cool anyway. So that's nice. Uh, so I did get, manage to play that. And you played uh, Psychonauts, a game that I've I now own on three separate platforms, and still have yet to play. Yeah, I played it Was in the. Like uh, I played it when it came out. I played it when it came out in October. In sorry, in October. Jesus Christ, what am I on? On, o- on Oculus Rift, I think I played it on. When it first mm-hmm. came out. And then never been back to it since. And I went back and I'd like completely forgot nearly everything about it. So it was like playing it again. I thought that's fantastic. <laughs> I, yeah, I own it on the Oculus store. I own it on Steam and I own it on PSVR. And I've never played a single one of them. When I was playing it though on my stream, I was looking and I was thinking, this looks so blurry to what I can remember. But then I thought, to be fair, it's an old game. Like, but it's PC, it shouldn't be having this problem. And then, after about 20 minutes into it, I paused it to check something, and the resolution within the game options was set to, like, 72% or something. <laughs> I was I'll like, knocked it. it up to, like, <laughs> to as high as it went, and I was like, there we go, now it actually looks like a... <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's a very, I... um, puzzle. It's not a puzzle game. Uh, you can teleport Obviously, with the idea of Psychonauts, you, you jump into people's minds to move around. You don't really walk around. You jump into people's minds to move around areas and try and figure out puzzles. And Yeah. It's another game that um, was creatively adapted for the PlayStation, wasn't it? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Or was it more aimed at Meta? Because Meta didn't have touch controllers in the early days, so maybe it was more aimed at the Quest. Or the Quest. The Oculus Rift. Mm without touch controllers mm. which explains why it's on their store and it also kind of works with the psvr because you know that didn't have any decent controls on yeah. it either so it, it worked for the early days of vr i think so it makes sense but i think i, I grabbed it on from... on a steam sale because I, I, I could i could remember liking it and i think on one of the steam sales it was like one pound fifty or something i was like it's all just add it to Steam. I know I've got it on Quest, but I mean on the Rift Store, but I might as well add it to Steam. That's a game that I would. It's, we're never going to see decent VR from them ever again. No. Which is sad. Sony has basically bought them to be a Spider Man game company, right? Mm hmm. Not a Spider Man VR game company, but a Spider Man game company. So, yeah, they're just going to make that for the rest of their days now, I think. Yeah. Which is a shame. But you never know, they might surprise us. <laughs> they won't do it. They won't. Um, but speaking of Sony and other things they won't do. So last month was we were on the cusp of the release of the PSVR on PC. Yeah. I'm not gonna use I'm not gonna go down the, the B word. <laughs> kind of. Um, but all my fears came true. So it's now happened. Yeah. So what's your... We'll go with our first take on it, because I feel like it's a... It is an onion of a topic. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So how was your first sort of impressions i mean one thing i was glad to find out was i didn't need to buy an adapter because they were hard to get hold of because i'm still using the 28 e so i had my virtual port so i was like yes that's a good start actually so yeah um people had a nightmare trying to get a hold of one at first so that that was a thing that it was that sony made no pre-orders at all there was no way of pre-ordering and then there were some people that managed to shoehorn an order through Amazon mm-hmm. and they were 
a couple of days later. But then on the day of, Sony opened up purchases, which I managed to get mine purchased from Sony day one and got it day two. Mm-hmm. Um, that was just an absolute just mess. It was a complete yeah. mess. They really botched. Um, well, maybe it's starting to become par for the course. I see, did you ever get the impression that Sony are kind of like, look, we've won the console wars like two mm-hmm. generations in a row now. We don't even have to try. Or do you think they just don't care about VR? I just, I just think the marketing team just needs firing. Simple as that. <laughs> I don't, I don't know if I pay that much attention to the non-VR side of Sony to say whether that's. I mean, the accurate. marketing people in in charge of the VR side. I mean, they might not even have a marketing team for the VR side. They might just be a. Yeah, we're going to do something. Just put a few things out, and then we'll be happy. Like then they're done. Maybe. But it just seems like everything they're doing is, like you said, just botched. Everything they're doing around I feel it. Like they had like a marketing budget for God of War. And then the marketing budget for everything PSVR two is less than that. Mm. Is that is that bad? Um they just Balls, nobody can hold a ball at Sony. They're dropping them all the time. Yeah. So, yeah, the the acquisition of the adapter itself was an absolute nightmare. Like, personally, I went from last episode, I'm going to get one to try for just science testing, just interested how it works, to the point of I'm not buying one because they're not even shipping all the cables you need with it. No. It's. It's one of those things that you don't need to care. Yeah. Until you upgrade your graphics card. Mm-hmm. And then at that point, you've already tried it. Will you even care? Yeah. So, like I put, like I said, it was a snow display port cable. And I thought, fucking hell, your Sony, you make them yourselves for your TV, you just slip and your monitor science things just slip on in. There's, uh, there are, there's. So, okay, the acquisition side of things was terrible. Then the second thing is... the Well, the cable, like you say, the cable is definitely a, a thing, but it's far from a deal-breaker. The mm-hmm. cable is, is really... I bought a U-Green cable for about eight quid. Yeah. It, nothing major, really. Yeah. But then... <laughs> Aside from the adapter and then the cable, I've seen so much rage towards Bluetooth, it's insane. Yeah. So, this is the other thing. So, I got the adapter and my motherboard has Bluetooth built into it. So, I was like, all right, I'm going to try this. And so, I started connecting via Bluetooth. And one controller connected perfectly fine. <laughs> it took a minute, but it, the, the right controller went on fine. But the left controller was a sheer nightmare. Mm. It just, just couldn't do anything. I couldn't get it to connect both controllers. And then when both controllers connected, the main screen, so when you launch the, when you want to use the PSVR, you have to install the PSVR software, which is fine. That's That's basically normal. If you're yeah. not using a Steam headset... And then by Steam, I mean the index. If you're not using a Valve headset, then you have to install additional software. You want to use HTC Vive or a Cosmos, you need Vive port. Mm -hmm. If you want to use an Oculus Rift or a Quest, you need the Meta software. If you want to use a WMR headset, you need WMR software. DPVR, you need the DPVR software. Pimax, you need the Pi tool. You just like... (laughs) Every single headset comes with its own software baggage. So the fact that I need software for it, I don't care. If you think that's bad, you're clearly an index owner because that's the mm-hmm. only other person in the world that's like won't understand. You need software to run a separate headset. Um, so that's fine. But when you launch the software, it's like, okay, we're going to walk you through this. Connect this cable, connect this cable, connect this cable, connect your controllers. And I had both controllers showing as being connected, but it wouldn't move. It wouldn't go forward from that screen. And I was like, what the hell is going on? And I spent hours trying to troubleshoot that, and I just couldn't get past that one screen. 
And I thought, oh my god, I'm just going to sell this freaking adapter because people pay for them because they're like rocking our shit. Mm -hmm. But then I thought, well, all right, I'll buy a Bluetooth adapter. Everybody's buying the TP link and they're kind of whining about the TP link. So I've had quite a lot of Asus products in the past. I've got a monitor in front of me, my motherboard. You know, I've got quite a, in my graphics card, all of these are Asus. So I thought, all right, I'll buy the Asus Bluetooth dongle. Buy that, plug that in, the controller just like being connected in seconds. The other one, it took a moment to find it and then connect and multiple tries. This one, it was night and day, totally different situation. And from then on out, it's been flawless. Mm. So it works at that point. But the whole thing, and you've not got the adapter, but you've still managed to play, but the whole thing to me just seems a half-baked, half arse executed idea. Yeah. So like like you, I got the well I had the I had the TP link that they were recommending anyway, because the team at Walk Over the Hour and they sent me their their body trackers. They had to review the they actually sent that in the box, like in a package as well, because that's the one they recommend using with their So I was like, I've already got that because I've I've been given it already. Um First day I just give up. I was like, it's not working. And then the second day, Zim had put a video out saying having problems where he spoke about Buck giving me like, a thing of making sure the drivers are up to date on your dongle and you've got it in an extension cable away from anything else that's possibly interfering. So I tried that, connected fine. Um, unpaired them because I needed to pair them back to the PlayStation for something. And I came back to, thought, right, I'll go back to testing the because obviously I wanted to put an article out on the VRM.com I'll go back and test it. And it was like, they wouldn't even pair back up. And I had to go in and device settings and tell it to forget and remove both controllers. And then I had to like pair them again, which then, like you, the right one paired up straight away. The left one, I was like, come on, just pair up. <laughs> and then I finished my testing. Next day I came back to do more. Um... Because my first day was spent just testing Revive with it. Um, all, <laughs> all my favourite games on Revive to see how they performed. Um, I ended up putting a tweet out on what I found of them. Put in a... It does this one pair at all again. And they hadn't even been unpaired from the PC. They just wouldn't connect up. I was like, great, okay, I've had enough. So I thought, I've got other adapters that aren't blue to 5.0, but I'm just going to test them. And... The one I used for the rest of it and never had any issues with moving forward was the one I got with my, I think, my e haptics vest. Just worked completely fine straight away. I was just like, yeah. Like, what's all this about? I've got the adapter you're recommending, one of the adapters you're recommending, and an adapter I've had since I had the B haptics. And the B haptics one works absolutely fine. Um, yeah, it's very. Very, very interesting. It's, it is. I, I, I think I don't, I don't know if Sony are just giving up on the PSVR. Mm. If they like, we don't, we don't care about this. Is, is this them essentially showing their, their colors of we don't care? So if we release this dongle business, we can get rid of the stock that we've got, and then yeah, we'll just kind of wind it down a mm. bit, or. Is it something else? But you can't help but get the feeling, like the dongle. I, like you said, it's Sony. You make televisions, DVD players, Blu-ray players, Freeview. You make everything audio-visual. Mm -hmm. You couldn't find a DisplayPort cable to put in there? Mm -hmm. Really? Like, it's, of course, they, they could, would, and should have done it. And then on top of that... I don't know, instead of leaving us all to guess what Bluetooth to use, why don't you install the one that's in the PlayStation 5? Mm -hmm. So we all have functional Bluetooth. Yeah. 
No, that's going to take additional time and money because we have to go through the whole process of getting it all cleared and tested and patched and, you know, we you, the license to, to go into this device. Rather than spending that time and money, let's just let everybody guess which Bluetooth they should probably be using. Yeah. It, it's just such a bullshit, half-baked process. Mm -hmm. I, I just I can't believe it that, once again, balls... Uh, they, they, they have ball shaped holes in their hands and they just fall all the time mm. it's become my daily driver though let's see outside of the original, original issues it i mean it's, it's gone from mine now because i paired it back up to the playstation and i just thought you know what i'm happy with the dpvr on my pc like i can't be bothered doing all this pairing crap every time <laughs> Yeah, it's so I've I've got the DPVR. It's it's in a box back there, and it's fine. Um, but I couldn't be bothered to jump between the DPVR software and the Meta software all the time. Mm -hmm. um, and also, my experience with the DPVR, I I I think I needed. My problem with the DPVR is it was on loan mm -hmm. at the time. So I wanted to get it quickly tested and faff with and then back to its owner. Um, and so I didn't put a lot of time and effort into it. And then it turns out the owner was like, no, take it, it's fine. Um, you've done a lot for me, you, you can keep mm -hmm. it. So I now have the DPVR, but I just can't bring myself to set it back up again. Whereas the PSVR, the, only, the biggest faff I'm going to have is the pivoting of the controllers mm -hmm. which admittedly the only time i really turn the psvr on is to play gran turismo and i can do that, that with the steering a, wheel yeah, or yeah, controller yeah. anyway yeah so i've not missed the controllers on the playstation something's going to come along like another synapse i'm going to be like oh balls i need to connect this back up and that might be the end of the psvr being my daily driver on the pc i don't know i may also sort of you horn the index into a corner somewhere uh, as a connecting dongle and then just use the index controllers and the playstation headset i, mm. I don't know um, or maybe I'll crack out the DPVR. You never know. Um, you know, stranger things have happened, but probably not. Yeah, it's, it's become my daily driver at this point, even though it was a nightmare to set up. I dig it. There's one thing I've actually loved seeing in the actual general feedback of everyone trying it is all that displays, which I've always been a massive pusher of, like. That's why I used Vive for so long, because they always did OLED displays. Until the Vive Pro 2, they always did OLED. Um, and also everyone going, oh, like, the image is beautiful without any sort of compression from either wireless or USB-C cable. And I'm like, that's why I've stuck with DPVR, because it's, it's, a, display yeah. port, it's a display port headset. <laughs> See, and the thing is, I've not noticed the Miura. Then again, I never really noticed the Miura on the PlayStation, but I've not noticed it on the PC. And I'm curious now if the people that were were like, the Miura, the Miura, do they get that on the PC? Because technically it should be hardware based. Mm. I think and I've seen... If maybe the PlayStations were actually poorly configured and it won't be as bad. Was it? I, I did watch one person's video on it. it might be an MRTV, maybe. And he was saying that he noticed it in the dark areas in Half-Life Alex. Other than being in the dark areas, you, you didn't notice it at all. Yeah. Fract is a great shot. I should have launched Fract. Mm -hmm. I went into Ancient Dungeon, which you're like, that looks like Minecraft. Oh, no. It's so colorful, and the lighting in it is sublime. So when you've got the dark, dark, and the bright lights, and oh, it is so crisp and beautiful. Ancient Dungeon is superb. In the PSVR 2, to the point that I was just like, this game's actually out on the PSVR 2. Mm -hmm. Probably should have bought that. So yeah, I had a great time. And I also tried um, Rogue Ascent. Which is now out on PC. Available now. 
other, other games are available. Um, and that's also incredibly bright and vibrant to the point that I actually had to turn the brightness down. I think that was an option in the Sony app. I didn't realize. Um, so yeah, I turned the brightness down because that one is just so bright and vibrant. But it, it looks stunning. Um, and yeah, I I absolutely... it's I've not used my PSVR so much as what I have done mm-hmm. over the last few purely because it's now connected to the PC it is my daily driver. Yeah. I got to the point, obviously, with, like I said, a few times I'll disconnect it, and I was like, I'm not going to touch anything, or if anyone wants me to review PSVR 2 game, I'm going to message them and just say, like, the response is going to be, let me finish my testing on PC first so I can just, don't have to disconnect and reconnect it. Um. <laughs> I do wish Sony would... Um sell the controller if sony turned around and said all right controllers are 100 quid each i would buy them mm-hmm. and just have one dedicated to pc and one dedicated to playstation yeah. i would buy them in a hobby and have you tested the battery on the pc i think my theory was right mm. i've done sort of two three hour sessions and i've still got about a half battery left mm. i know during my test i have to stop to Recharge them once. Hmm. But that was me just hammering it with testing all out. And I didn't charge them. I think it must have been about three, four hours maybe. And then I was like, oops. Yeah. That's it. I've I've had a way more battery on the PC, which is was always a thing that I was like, wow, you only get two hours in a normal time. What with the PC not using the haptic triggers and whatnot, then it's it's actually saved a bit of battery power on there, which is good news because many people are like, if I'm tethered to a PC, I want to play longer. So, yeah, that's good to know. I tried. I played a. I mean, I think the first thing I jumped into was Half Life Alex because I was like, I just need to see. But I think I'd actually I jumped into Gunman Contract and Half Life Alex. <laughs> <laughs> I jumped into Half Life just because apparently we, we it's the law and we have to. Yeah. And it was fine. It was Half Life mm-hmm. in in uh, PSVR, but it was yeah. It's it's still Half Life. It still looks as yeah. good as everything else. So the one thing I have noticed though is the resolution of the panel is crazy mm-hmm. to the point that my thirty eighty is panting. Yeah. So I've actually gone into Steam VR and told it to change the global settings for the headset, and I've knocked the resolution down. Yeah, I did. I just, mean, I'm running on a 2080, so I did. I was just like, I mean, it still looks good when you knock it down because the panels yeah, are that it good. Looks stunning. <laughs> it looks stunning, but I'm having to potato games and, yeah. and knock the resolution down, which is it's fine. I'm I don't have the money for a 40 series and see the point when a 50 series is probably going to be out in like two months Mm -hmm. so yeah i probably wouldn't buy a 40 series i'd probably go for a 90 next time because i bought the 3080 and they were like we're not going to release a 90 we're not going to release a ti and then like three months later they released a a ti and i don't know they they were always going to do the 90 but they were never going to do a ti and then they released a ti which fucking assholes But, um, yeah, that's NVIDIA for you. Yeah, like I said earlier, I did a lot of testing with Revive. Um, If you don't know what Revive is, it's a program that lets you play games on the Metastore and Steam. Um, You do get... Which in this modern day and age is kind of weird. They call it Revive. Yeah. Because the idea being that you could play Meta or Oculus games in your HDC Vive. Yeah. And probably nobody's playing on HTC Five anymore. <laughs> so, yeah. I suppose it would need a full rebrand, and then you'd get people who use it before or looking for it. And I don't think that many people uh, are actually maintaining that program. To be honest, mm. the amount of games I used to revive that now don't work, I've just given up on it. Gonna say, I installed all my fa- I installed all my favorites from the Meta Store. Well, Oculus mm. Store, which was. Arctic one that worked fine. Asgard's rough. Performance heavy. I've still never played though. So I knocked like the resolution of settings were down obviously on that. And then you had to use O and X or Square and Triangle to get into the menus. There's no like the pause button just takes a screenshot. 
so <laughs> there's yeah i've had a few issues in the sense of controller bindings naturally nobody's overly um accommodated for that which is fine but then also every now and again the steam vr ui really doesn't like the the psvr for some strange reason i'll click on something on say i want to play half-life alex and it's it'll load up something completely different or it'll take me back to the front page of my library and then nothing it, i won't be able to scroll like it'll be it, it breaks for some strange reason mm. but i think uh, sony i think um valve will probably have if not soon fix that issue anyway mm-hmm. um because let's face it, Sony must have made some sort of a deal with the devil to be able to use images of Half Life Alex in pretty much every promotional image of this this box. Yeah. So presumably, this. Um, what was very um, weird during the revive testing and speaking to a couple of people online is, as with everything, it seems like for me, Lone Echo One would only work in 120 hertz, 90 hertz setting the headset to 90 hertz in steam just caused stuttering and artifacting when moving the head and edge of nowhere need 90 hertz was had texture glitches 120 hertz had no issues on edge of nowhere as well but there was someone online who said his is the opposite way around exact same issues but he has to have it in 90 hertz and not 120 hertz so it was <laughs> I don't know what see that's <laughs> odd because no meta headset <laughs> when they were made did 120 yeah they all did 90 at best, if not 72. Mm-hmm. So that's interesting that that's the case, unless it's reprojections kicking in. Mm. And so 120 makes it 60, and 60 is fine. Yeah, it's very weird. But it seems like different for other people, which... Yeah. I mean, I did get I to play... To try any of them. I, I did jump back into Phantom Cover Ops, which is obviously when you're talking Quest and PC, Oculus exclusive. Which then dreams as Splinter Cell in a kayak. Um, Did I ever buy that? That game is so dark. It was perfect on those displays. Because they I use dark, they use the darkness so much. They're like so. I've been playing a lot of the um, escape room game. Escape room. I never did buy it. Yeah, I've been playing a lot of Escape Sim with the wife in, in the PSVR. She's like, oh, can, you know, aren't you going to come and sit with me like you did do before? I was like, no, I've got a new toy. Go away. Because <laughs> I used to sit behind her in the room where we would talk, whereas I'm like, no, just use Discord. So she's now off in another room playing on her PC, and I'm sat in here um, playing on the, the PSVR. And like you say, it's it's thanks to the globular cluster head strap, it's comfortable and the the panel itself is just superb i've always been curious what psvr could do when it had a decent console behind it Mm -hmm. i'll have to settle for a psvr2 which i the the eye tracking still bugs me but it is what it is Mm -hmm. i mean i've seen on reddit people got someone's got the adaptive is it adaptive triggers i've got working already on someone on reddit that's... I've always thought that's possible because I'm pretty sure you can do it with a PlayStation controller. So yeah, it's surely that's just software based and implementations required by developers. Yeah, so that doesn't shock me. But the eye tracking is the big thing, and the problem is that even if somebody does get the eye tracking working, the support for it because most developers either don't own an eye tracked headset or most users don't own an eye tracked headset. There's no point in pouring money into making that feature functional yeah. in the games. It's the, only when it becomes just the the basic norm will eye tracking become the 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 thing that everybody has and wants and, and it gets into headsets. Yeah, I mean the only use I've got on the Viper Eye is I go into Resonate on a Friday, and that's really the only time I connect the Pro Eye up now. As well. <laughs> Which has got my facial tracking everything on it, but it's way too worth it for in there. It's, it makes it more. I mean, at the time, it used to be my daily driver for PC when you had it, but it still makes it worth it. Like, you go in and you just see more normal. Yeah, I've got the Quest Pro that's got eye tracking. And face tracking, hasn't it? 
Yeah, it's got face and eye tracking, and I just I've I've never felt the need to use either of them. He said I use it in for social app and I say. Yeah. But it's it's so much more potential. We just need it to, to happen. That's what I mean. I think Vive have had it that long, but again, it was a case of how many people owned a Vive Pro I like developers aren't gonna put it into the game, they're not gonna work with that. Businesses worked with it because obviously the headset was enter- aimed at enterprise, and so businesses used it to get full detail in looking at things. But we never know. Maybe Apple will, will normalize it, and Meta will do on it into a headset, and then it'll become the standard. Mm-hmm. Who knows? People won't have to worry about updating the rigs all the time because they'll probably run all right. It's the the one feature that I want it for is to just take some of the the heavy lifting off of the graphics card, mm-hmm. so I don't have to worry about upgrading it every twenty minutes. I bought the thirty eighty in twenty twenty one two mm. when did they come and. Ever since then, I've always wished I had either the at least the 3090 or upgraded to a 40 series. So, yeah, it's it can't happen soon enough. I also tried the mods, just general mods on it, just general linear, like Dragon Files mods. So, like Portal. Some of the flat, like GTFO. I mean, as ex- oh, yeah. as expected, they all worked because they're all just running through Steam. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I bet your GTFO is pretty special because yeah. that's quite a dark game normally, isn't it? And since maybe I should go back and buy Westworld. Did we play it on it's on stream with Darn it. with Ball and Cold G- GTFO? You and the other souls did. I think did Buck play with us? I know there was four of us. Yeah, I think it was a VR Souls games night, but I was working and yeah. didn't own the game. Um, so then Cold maybe filled the void. Since we played that, it had a massive, massive performance up to upgrade. Because I, I launched it and I was like, oh, I forgot how bad this performance was. And then I went on to the Flat to VR Discord and I was like, like oh, I, will. I searched it GTF old mod and actually went on. I went on to the um, the GitHub and I was like, oh my god, it's had like so many updates since then, including the PC performance update and stuff. I was like, right. And it just ran smooth as anything. I was like, this is this is what was great. Yeah. it's I, I'll, I'll get it one day, maybe. Like I said, I've got way too much stuff going on already. So I'm not going to... Uh, probably not going to go back too quickly. But I would like to to caveat all these issues we had getting it set set up. There is some people who just went in and it was done, no issues. Yes, we hate you. Um, yeah, it's there are there are people that have, have managed to launch it and and be fine. Um, people using their onboard Bluetooth and maybe just a. a signal booster mm-hmm. so you can use the onboard i mean my onboard bluetooth it turns out it does have an aerial which maybe if i moved it slightly closer towards me i would have had a better time but that basically means the moment i stepped away from the desk it would have been pointless my onboard bluetooth so, i think I the yeah. aerials in the in the cupboard under my desk because i never <laughs> yeah. connected the aerial up. i didn't think i'd installed it but it turned out i did yeah so yeah, but if if moving it from sort of this side of the PC to the other side of the PC is going to make a difference, then yeah, I don't yeah. I don't think it would not help me at all when when in the final product. So yeah, I'm I'm glad with my purchase. Like I say, I think Sony just kind of half baked it, and they they could have just included the one that's in the PS5 and taken yeah. everybody's pain away, but they they just didn't. Um. Well, I was I was glad to see some people had a stress free transition, but mm-hmm. it just seems to be user to user, depending on what's what. <laughs> and the thing is, I, as a PC gamer, I kind of expect faff and jank. 
Yeah. I don't know why. My 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 standards are yeah. I've I've it, it's nowhere near as bad as it used to be. Um because when it comes to playing games on PCs, I in the old days you used to go out, you used to buy a game and then install it and not be able to play it for three weeks because you needed a patch. Yeah. So for this to be a thing, like it was annoying, but I, it was just part of the process. I didn't I didn't care. I wasn't nah. I wasn't raging and, and getting angry and taking to the internet screaming how bad it was. I mean, I know that's technically what I'm doing now, but I'm offering my opinion because this I've got two hours to fill with you. But I don't, I don't, I have an opinion, but I don't, I'm, I'm not going to get mad at Sony. Um, they did what they did and that's the product they want to put out. That's, yeah. that's their choice. I think the only other thing I really mentioned in my review was the actual cost. As I've been saying, it's like, I mean, it's still the cheapest high end PC VR headset, but for what it does compared to things like the Quest and thing, Quest 3. Like PlayStation VR becomes an expensive purchase. By the time if you have to buy the adapter and you have to buy a Bluetooth, there is you have to buy. A, there is a box, isn't there? You can buy a PSVR two PC version. Ah, okay. That comes with the dongle and the headset and everything. Ah, okay. You don't have to buy the headset and the, the adapter, but um, yeah, it's still a problem. It is still an issue. Uh, like you say, it's one of those things that if somebody came to me and said, I'm looking at getting into VR with a PC, as a first or even maybe second or third experience, I'm never going to recommend this process. Yeah. Even like the, I'll, the, the experience I had took me back to the DK2 days. When you plug the DK2 in and it kind of just didn't really work at first because nobody had got it, so nobody had made software for it, so it kind of just didn't work. All I could do was look at a house of cards on a desk, and that's literally all I could do with the DK2 for a while. And it kind of took me back to that where you got it and it just kind of didn't work. And the frustrations I had, because you probably won't know this but every now and again in in the in the early days of the dk2 you launch a vr game and it pops up in your vr headset now whereas in the dk2 days that wasn't the case you would launch a game and it would maybe show up in the headset and it would take over and that would be fine or maybe you had to try and get the game onto the vr headset because it was running as essentially like a third screen so then that's where I learned Windows shortcuts like Windows shift and left and right arrow keys to skip windows between different displays because that's the kind of janky crap you used to have to deal with. Um, and it took me back to that kind of frustration that I had way back then when you were just like, will it work? Won't it work? Will this do a thing? Won't it do a thing? So it's a long sort of, of process for that. So I wouldn't recommend, like if that was your first VR experience, and that's what happened. You would hate VR for years. It would take so much to commit, like to to convince you that 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 wasn't the usual experience, and it it's not that bad. Yeah. Whereas Quest, even though Link can be a little temperamental at times, is a much smoother experience. Yeah. To connect to a PC, so I could never recommend that as a first headset to mm -hmm. anybody. But if anybody said, right, I've got a Quest, now I want to upgrade to a better PC headset, I'd have a hard time telling them not to, to go for the PlayStation. Yeah. Because the alternative is hundreds of pounds more and just kind of old. Mm -hmm. Admittedly, DPVR is a thing and it's fine. Um, I'm sure their product support is wonderful. You've been using it without issue for, for a very, very long time. But the next headset that comes to he my mind um, is an Index. Mm -hmm. And it's a lovely headset. It's super comfortable. And the setup is second to none. Like, as a total package, that is an astonishing headset. But the visuals on it are so old at this point. Valve, like, Valve rejigged 
the Steam Deck, mm-hmm. and they put the OLED screen in it and stuff. Just do, just, just do that at least. <laughs> if you're not going to give us a new headset, put a new display in there. Yeah. So then people that buy a mod, like I would honestly, I would probably buy a mod uh, another Index. Yeah. In a heartbeat, if they put an OLED display in it, because that's all that lets it down is that panel. The comfort, the fit, even the weight I can live mm-hmm. with. That that screen is just so old; it looks like I've got Vaseline on my eyeballs. Yeah. After playing on even a Pico Four, after playing a Pico Four and then going to the Index, I was like, "Wow, this is really showing its age." Yeah. So. Yeah, that's that's the thing for me. I wouldn't recommend it, like you say, but I I couldn't tell somebody not to get it. Yeah. Just be warned, it, it contains jank. Should be on the box. PSVR adapter, Windows PC, contains jank. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's one thing we picked up when we talked about it last week is one of the issues you might have is, is someone who's maybe buying it because they've got a PC. They've already got it, they've got a PC that's good enough to run it. And they use a plug and play experience and everything works perfectly. I've, we we spoke about in the last episode. Is that are they going to struggle with PC VR because there's so much junk and so much faffing and and stuff sometimes to get things working. Yeah, the the console gamer coming to PC, they are going to have a terrible time at the best of times. Even with like a a seamless experience, they're going to have a bad time because they're literally used to just pressing the power button and going, "Ooh, look at that!" Like it is. PC gaming is not that simple. Mm-hmm. It never has, never will be. There'll always be patches and problems and, and things that you have to work around, whether it's your GPU drivers or this dongle doesn't work with that game and things like that. I've had all kinds of crap. After the fall would not run for me because I had software for the soft phone of my work installed on the PC. There's no way Vertigo could have known that. <laughs> And I'm probably one of like two people in the world that had that issue. I think yeah, I thought that was funny that we, when that was it, when we were like early testing that, where you were like, I, I, was, I think I mentioned like, you you've got like five hours in it, and you're like, yeah, just stuck on the in the air on the start screen. I can't do anything. <laughs> yeah. That's, That's literally all I could do. I could all I could do is get to the start screen. And then by using the feature that Steam have baked into Steam VR, where you can change the scale, I could leave the black surrounding area I was in and see the area outside of where I was supposed to be. That's all I could see. I paid for the premium version of the game and got early access to it, and I couldn't use it. <laughs> it was hilarious. <laughs> and then I bought it on... No, I refunded that. And bought it on Oculus, and it worked fine. Yeah. So yeah, it was it was good times. Oh well, yeah, I think to sum up the PlayStation and my review of the adapter. Well, not even the adapter, just it on PC was. If you've got a PlayStation Five and a PC that's capable of PC VR, it's a no-brainer. You're gonna extend your library by tenfold with what's available on Steam. Um if I was on the same view, would it be the first headset I'd recommend to someone if they're saying I want to get into PC VR? No, I'd probably say get a meta quest. <laughs> yeah. I I mean some would say that if you have a PSVR two and a PC that's capable of VR, it really is a no brainer on buying the adapter. Uh, it'll open possibilities to library so much bigger than what you can get on the PS5 um, to PC VR games like Half-Life Alex. You get access to the meta exclusives with Revive, your Lone Echoes. People that get to experience Lone Echo for the first time, yeah. now they've got a PS VR 2, oh, you're in for a treat. For I've sure spoke about like. my um, hot take on in VR. I think as an overall package, Lone Echo trumps Half-Life Alex for me. Yeah, that's that. I I I buy that. Um, yeah, absolutely. I like Alex's so very special. As an overall package, I would say Lone Echo 
one and two as a package trumpet. Which, I mean, we have to, you know, get your flowers out, pay your respects. Meta of shutdown ready at dawn. I know. Which is just <laughs> odd. They, they've, they literally meta bought ready at dawn, closed down Echo Arena, yeah. and then they never released anything. I think it's a closed down Echo, on the Echo Arena because I said they wanted to give the studio the availability and resources to work on something work else. On the new game. And then, yeah. like, they're gone. It's it's just it's just gone. Whatever that new game was, like, and every I remember every connect coming around, sitting chatting with you, and then we're like, oh yeah, maybe we're gonna hear from Ready at Dawn this this month. We 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 never did. We never heard a single thing from Ready at Dawn, and then now they're gone. I would lo- I would absolutely love it if I mean, two thousand say Sony got all the team together and give them stuff to do with PSVR two, but. I don't think that's uh, impossible. I don't like you say. I hope all of the developers have either been absorbed into other meta studios yeah. or found themselves in a new... Because, I mean, let's face it, there are so many games that come out and they're indie darlings, and it turns out they're indie darlings because basically the people that made it made all of the AAA games you know and love. Yeah. So hopefully they can go on to make a new game that is you know uh, as good as as what they've already managed to pull out many people don't get into vr to get rich they get into vr because they love vr and hopefully their love for vr hasn't been pooped out the other end by meta yeah um but yeah so it was a shame but not a shock and the thing is yeah i i i may be accused of defending them but you never know maybe meta wanted them to do stuff and they were just hemorrhaging money and turning in nothing. Yeah. Maybe they were like, well, what about uh, basketball? But in space, they're like, that's just Lone Echo again. Like, that's Echo Arena. Yeah. Do something. And maybe they just weren't producing. So the Meta were like, look, we, we're just hemorrhaging money now. Just go away. We, we don't know the inside story. I imagine somebody will, you know, be out of an NDA at some point in the near future and let us know. But mm-hmm. until then, just, yeah, hopefully you guys find something better to do with your days and uh, bring us more cool games like Echo Arena and Low and Echo again soon mm-hmm. I mean speaking about Love of Reality is something that Jamie Feltham and, and Zena have who brought us the um, VR showcase they do, they do indeed the VR yeah. game showcase it was the VR first person shooter showcase <laughs> as I've seen it dubbed um there, there were a lot of shooting games in that game, like a lot of shooting games. Yeah. Um, that's a shooting game. That's a shooting game. That's a shooting game. That's a shooting game. Escaping Wonderland isn't. That's what I'm really looking forward to. Same here. Because I love Down the Rabbit Hole. Mm-hmm. So when I saw that they were coming with a new game, I was like, oh, this is fantastic. But on top of that, it also looks quite escape roomy, kind of. Yeah. Yeah, um, so down the rabbit hole, for those of you that don't know, it's like Alice in Wonderland, except you're kind of in a well, and you're playing the game in the walls of the the well. It's like a diorama in the walls, isn't it? Yeah, you can see the the story going on. I mean, it's it's that good that you forget you're in the well quite a lot, Yeah, and you get engrossed in what you're seeing in front of you. Um, But it looks like we're going back into that world, but then we're also going to be first-person doing things and and stuff to kind of escape from wonderland as an escape room kind of story as well which yeah i'm totally down for that big 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 bad way uh can't wait to see that come into the world however it comes whether it's a quests exclusive or or whether it's going to make it to pc you'd think i would look this stuff up but you know why would i do that when i can just speculate and get it wrong so what was interesting is straight after the VR showcase finished, I jumped on to I got asked did I wanna join as a guest on Cross Button VR with Games of T and that. You did, yes. Um where so one long after the showcase we jumped on, spoke about it in our general thoughts, and I found out that neither Reese or Alec had actually played down the rabbit hole. I was like, You need to play that. 
They definitely do. That's <laughs> awesome. I was like, play that. I think I'll say, the game got excited Alex and he was saying like he's never ever played the original yet and he said I was like well I noticed yeah, yeah uh, they, they've been playing Half-Life Alex and I was like oh, okay yeah you, you're you kind of experiencing they were obsessed with a button <laughs> yeah <laughs> and he, he was just like look at this button though look at this I'm like we were all here like two years ago um but yeah so that that's it's just that is admittedly it's mildly acquired yeah. A massive sleeper hit for me. Like I, I really, really dug that that game. It, it was one that caught me off guard. I think I stumbled upon it on Viveport, mm. and then when my Viveport subscription expired, I went and bought it on Steam because it was a great game. Yeah. So that's actually going to be out this time next month. By all accounts, Escaping Wonderland is out on the twenty sixth of September. Mm-hmm. So. I'm definitely looking forward to that one. I have, I am somewhat struggling to find uh, platforms, but it's definitely out on MetaQuest. It's on PC. Oh no, sorry, I'm thinking about Down Rabbit Hole. Down Rabbit Hole's on PC, so hopefully it might come across. Uh, let's see what Henry had to say. Let me have a look on here. Oh, it does say it's MetaQuest and Pico on the um... it's MetaQuest platform in 2024. Pre-orders are live with a 10 percent discount. Yeah, so by the looks of things, it is just going to be a meta game for now. Pico as well. Least. Pico as well. Yeah. Money is in mobile, sadly, at the moment. Yeah. So PC games take a little bit of time to arrive. but So one thing I was happy to see, and I've seen it get <laughs> so much hate, is Hitman 3. Obviously, because they're going with the cell shader look, I've heard like so many people online say it looks trash. It's not what it's supposed to be, blah blah. But I was like, it'll work to me. It, it will. It will absolutely work. And then, I mean, there's recent reminders: the Attack on Titan. Everyone looked at that and was like, "Oh, it looks crap." And then everybody started playing it. I was like, "Actually, this." Yeah, that was like me. Though. Yeah, that was me. I was like, "It's." Um, so, and the thing is. There's various different things you have to take into account. Number one, the obvious backlash. Well, they've made it for Quest. Yeah, okay, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. As I was just saying, though, the money is in mobile. Yeah. It it needs to be made for Quest, so then there's a chance they could port it to the PC. Um, Number two is the PC and PlayStation versions of the old Hitman 3 were better looking but then you didn't do anything with your hands everything was just a button push yeah and there's an there's a certain element to you putting the effort into murdering somebody brutally with a a knife or chicken wire that i think maybe we should have a little bit of a disconnect from the real world yeah so people don't train to be murderers in VR? I don't... I mean, technically, you can train to be a murderer in VR in pretty much any and every game you come across. But I, I just like that it's not so hyper-realistic that it doesn't look like I'm straight up murdering a guy. Yeah. I think, as well, like you said, the, like when they said Hitman 3 was coming to PC, I know someone who I used to play a lot of standout with, like... First ever VR Battle Royale game, which has died a death now because Population 1 and things are all out. Um, But a guy I played a lot of that with, he basically just fell out of love with VR, sold everything, and he went out and bought a Quest 2, I think it was. Is it, yeah, Quest 2, when it when that came out, when it came over to PC. Because he was like, yes, the only game he wanted was Hitman. And he was like, We'll, we'll finally get proper interactions and blah blah blah. And I was I was on the same boat. I was like, yes, PC, you're going to be able to use both hands. It's not going to be restricted by your controller. And and then it came out, and you could use one hand, and your other hand was just a limp. <laughs> I was like, what yeah. is this? <laughs> yeah, it's. Um, I've still never played the PC version, uh, mostly f- because of a. I don't massively care about. The Hitman universe. It mm-hmm. is a game. I get the under, I, I get the appeal and and stuff. I'm 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 not massively sneaky. Yeah. Um. So most of the time, I would just try and shoot people in the dick and end up dead. 
so I don't have that much of a love of Hitman. And then I had it on Game Pass and I installed it and then I've never played it. And I think I bought it like two or three weeks ago on a Steam sale because it was super cheap. So maybe I'll try try that mm. that version. But yeah. I d I don't care that it looks crappy. I just I'll play it. It'll look fun probably. Mm-hmm. I'll I'll try it. So I'm a big yeah. fan of I'm a, like a big fan of Hitman series and like I was so excited to play them in VR and then just didn't get what I wanted out of it. You know the thing that the kind of I don't know whether this has got anything to do with it, but I remember back in the early early two thousands, Hitman Two was out and about, and then it was Hitman Two being removed from shelves because you stab an Arab or something. I can't remember what it was, but there was something that it was now being removed from shelves for, and you were never going to be able to buy it anymore. The game was banned, and my mother at the time worked at um, Asda. She worked not only at Asda, but she worked at the entertainment and, and cigarette counter. Mm-hmm. So the moment I read that, I'm flicking through the sun and I see that, and I phoned up. I was like, "Have you got Hitman 2? She's like, "Yeah, have you got it on the Xbox? Yeah, yeah. Just, just buy it for me." And she's like, "Why?" I was like, "Just, just buy it. It's going to disappear from shelves." All right, fair enough. It never disappeared. Mm. Never went anywhere. <laughs> so I kind of felt a bit robbed. Like I bought the game with the intention of never being able to buy it again, and it never disappeared anywhere. <laughs> so I, maybe because I felt a bit robbed because of that, I um, yeah, maybe that's what it is. I don't know. Speaking of old games getting some new touches, one I was shocked was Vertigo. Release in Arizona Sunshine, remade. Yeah, on the new engine. I, I don't. Part of me saw that and went, "Really?" I I guess maybe it's more modern mechanics. Came out the that's happening. middle of no, I, out nowhere. I played Arizona Sunshine too, and I was like, "This looks just like the first one." It doesn't look as if there's been much of a graphical upgrade at all. Screenshots look great, but in headset, it kind of just looked the same to me. So when I heard that they were upgrading Arizona Sunshine, I was like, to what? But maybe the maybe it is just rose-colored glasses, and and maybe I do just dig Virgo or something, and and it, it is actually better. I don't I don't know. Mm. But that game always looked great to me, and I don't know where they're going to gain anything better than what we've already got. So I think they worked a lot more on the mechanics on number two. I think number two was a, a slight improvement to number one in visuals, yeah. but not like, like a massive upgrade. Game, what? Um, never had melee attacks. Mm-hmm. You couldn't punch a zombie in the first game. You couldn't stab them. Mm-hmm. Which was odd, but yeah, that was a thing. You couldn't do it. Whereas I bet you they're going to put that in there now. I think it's just going to be so, on the as Zach just remade on the updated engine of user number two with the dismemberment with knives and you can pick, carry the heads around and stuff. I think it's just going to be that, but the first yeah, game. I think so. And then it's also worth mentioning for those of you that either didn't buy the DLC. Uh, but you do own the original game for $10. Yes, I don't know what that's going to transfer over to pounds. Uh, you will be able to upgrade your existing edition to the new edition. Yeah. So don't pre-order and shell out. Like in this modern day and age, pre-ordering a digital game is a mugs game. Mm-hmm. Um, don't bother pre-ordering. Just get the upgrade when it comes on the release day, and you'll be able to get the upgraded version, and you will get all the DLC. So I think... So it's a bargain if you don't already own them at the time the vr showcase was on as well sony had their sale until i think a week after the current sale in arizona sunshine one was four pound so you could have got that and then upgraded yeah. for the extra money when it came out yeah. and not really saved yourself a tenner because it's going to be 24.99 so you could have saved yourself a tenner in the instant thing there yeah that's it. So it, don't don't feel like you have to shell out. They're not like gouging you for more money, making you buy the game a second time. There is an upgrade option. Yeah. So don't worry about that. But you'll get all of the the DLC with that too. So if you don't already own that, 
proper bargain. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I was shocked, like you. I was shocked about that one. Um, but I'd heard they were going to be there, but I was like, what? What they're going to show? Like what's? And then it was like they were going to be involved in it, and I was like, what they're going to show? And then I thought it was going to be D DLC for Arizona Sunshine too. Yeah, and then which I've still yet to complete. Oh my god! Look, we've got a. It was funny because I was actually watching Shay play it live. Play it. She streamed it, didn't she, during the day one time? Because she said yeah, she, she never ever played she... it. And I was watching that and I was like, oh, well, I said in the chat, and I want to. I, I have to go back and play this. It's been so long since I played number one. And then that got announced, yeah. and I was like, okay, now I'm just waiting until whenever, till it comes out. No. I wonder if she ever got Is it past September? The car. <laughs> She's in the chat. Now, it, tell, us, it... tell us, tell us, Tell us, Shay, did you get past the car? I was I was at work, so I could only watch, but every time I glanced down, she was fighting with the car. And I remember having the same issue in the past, and I can't remember if it was me or if it was the game. Whether I didn't do a thing, when I did get around it, I was like, oh, that's the thing I missed, or if that option wasn't there in the first place. I promise if you go back a second time, it probably will work. Mm -hmm. Um if you go back a second time i'll i'll even go and, and do it with you if if you ask me nicely um so yeah it's yeah it is it's i've had that issue before you're not you're not alone but i have gotten past it many a time let's we'll do the the new shiny one i'll buy i'll buy you the new upgraded version and then we'll get past the car I'll just stand back and shoot a zombie if it comes close to you, but I'll let you do everything else. So another one that was sort of announced there. Well, it was announced there, wasn't it? Um, I know I played it. I think you played it. And um, Well, we got the first five levels of it, and that's Vendetta Forever. It's like kill, grab a gun, move. Kill someone, grab mm -hmm. the gun, move. Um, This is why they label it kill... But I can't remember. They, they, they named it perfectly. Yeah. Kill, 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 kill. Emotion. Yeah, they called it a thing that is kill to move, basically. Yeah. Um, oh, low, low kill, kill motion. motion. Low kill motion. Low kill motion. There you go. There we go. We found. We got there eventually. I mean, I did just read my preview because I mentioned yeah. it in there. <laughs> got there eventually. I was literally back through the VR realm. Yeah. Just to see if, what it says. Yes. It's very stylized. It's a bit like. I sort of called it. It's like a mix of super hot, but with a bit more detail in. Yeah, it's it very it, like it immediately grabbed me. Is like, ooh, that looks quite stylish, and that looks quite fun. And everything is a weapon, by all accounts, in the sense that if, like you literally have a pencil to murder somebody with. So yeah, that, that looks good. And they're currently running a... There's a demo available. Yeah. So if you want to try it, go and play the demo. Uh, which is what makes me slightly less worried about saying something I shouldn't do. I think you get the first five levels in the demo, so... Yeah. Well, well basically, what the preview we, that we had before the showcase, I think that's what they just put out as a demo, so... If you go around the Super demo, if you go around the demo, yeah. on the gunship level, hidden somewhere is my name in graffiti. Somewhere in there. Oh, nice. I saw Benjo, I've... but I only got as far as the one where you're climbing the fire escape. Mm -hmm. it's, 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 I found it quite difficult. I found a lot of them, but I've never found my name. I thought maybe I didn't make the cut, because I said they were putting some of the End Dreams create crew names in there in graffiti. And I saw people, yeah. or Scorpio, people like that, and I was just like, oh, maybe I didn't make the cut, because I said they couldn't get everyone in. And then when the, after the showcase, I said... This is where you'll find your names and listed whose names are in each level. I was like, oh man, it's in there somewhere. Oh, nice. <laughs> I just need to find it. <laughs> I'll, I'll have to. I presumably I can stream the demo, so maybe yeah. I'll have to um, do that. And the, there's, I've been invited into a, a speedrunning contest for it. I can't mm -hmm. remember the rule, um, but maybe I should try and do that. So we found as well. I know there's been talk about them in, in the chat over this episode. Flat to VR announced their first four things. They did, yeah. Wrath 
uh, Aeon of Ruin, okay. Flat Out Road Quest, and Trombone Champ. Trombone Champ is one that excited me the most. Out of the whole showcase. Really? Yeah. Okay. See, I've always had a soft spot for Flat Out. I've bought that on every single platform. Yeah. I've been able to buy it. I've always dug Flat Out. To the point that when... Um, I was skimming through Steam, I think it was. I saw there's a game called Trail Out, which just screams flat out, but it's made in Unreal. So I bought that to UEVR it to play the game in VR, and it was fantastic. So when I saw that flat out was being brought yeah. to VR by the flat to VR crew, I was like, oh, yeah. When that first, which which console was it first come out? Which generation was it? PS3 generation. I was PS, it must have been PS3. I was playing on PC long before. Because <laughs> I know I played. Flat out, they had a PC version a long time ago, mm. and I played many of them on the PC. It was one of the reasons I built a PC because a friend of mine had a PC, and he was like, "Yeah, I've got Steam, I've got all these games." I was like, "Yeah, but where do you, like I want discs, I want everything, I want physical media." Yeah, that guy's long dead. Um, but yeah, he had a PC and he had all the flat outs on Steam, and I was like, damn it, I want a PC now. Because I played flat out on, I mean, it shows the age of it, forums were a thing. And I was in a community of like console gamers called Console Free, I think it was. And then we used to uh, every week get together and play flat out. Like just yeah. once a week, just for just for the fun of destroying each other. <laughs> um, it was so, and they had all the mini games as well. You had to like throw yourself with the windshield, um, which were were also very very fun. Um, and bowling and all kinds of dumb stuff. I, yeah. I did game so much. So when I saw that was coming, I was pleased. The so the trombone champ is what what floated your boat. It just looks like fun i mean i'd never even heard of it until the showcase like i didn't even know the flat screen version <laughs> i was i was aware of it mildly but i still don't i mean presumably it's just like a rhythm game yeah um so on that although it does look like there's some sort of element of progression to it yeah it looks like yeah Link. collect so that could trading cards and yeah, it's like the Fish at one point. Yeah, so I thought it just looks like mindless fun, which is sometimes what I want. And uh, and then I know you literally spent the first part of the show saying how you hate roguelites, but when I saw RoboQuest was coming, I was like, okay, that's good because I've been playing it in UEVR, and it's the controls aren't perfect, but it's playable. So the fact that they're making a PC version of that, I was very very pleased. Yeah. That's I I like that the wraith is it's one of the older sort of doomy quakey presumably that's a team beef section of the flat to VR yeah that's taking that one which is fine if if that's your kind of thing I have nostalgia but it's not that strong mm -hmm. so I that that doesn't make me like oh yes I want to play do like I don't I don't care if I can play quake in VR I do it because they can but I. I yeah, I, it's, I'm, I wasn't bothered about that one. What I love is I went there with announced four games. Like I was yeah. when they said we're going to I thought, oh, we're going to get a peek into actually what the the first game they're doing, like the plan to officially release. And I was like, oh, he's four. I was like, oh, <laughs> yeah. They're, they're not. I like. I, I get the impression that as a, um, it's obviously a group of people have all been working on different elements of different games and things and they've all sort of come together to form a studio and then they're published by impact reality is it i, I know hmm. impact reality is one of their studios essentially isn't it um and yeah when uh, i clearly there are different people with different sectors and different interests yeah and so they've managed to get four games and because they're only modifying the game essentially with the developer on hand but because they don't have to worry about making the assets and the mechanics they just have to work essentially with polishing the controls and, and yeah. getting the, the camera placement and stuff so i guess it allows them the freedom to be able to work on 
four games at once and be realistically getting them to market in a reasonable time. Yeah. So I suppose it's good yeah. that the quote unquote heavy lifting of the game design has already been done and they are just using their expertise and making them VRable. One thing I was happy to see, I think it was out came out on Twitter um afterwards was the confirm with flat out. So obviously all the footage you showed at the showcase was just the bonnet view of the car, not the cockpit in the car, but they've mm-hmm. said it's still something they've not got right. So there's still something they're working on, but it is going to have the cockpit view. They just didn't have it ready for that trailer. So we know that's coming. Because yeah. at first I was thinking, oh, I hope you get the cockpit in this and you're not like just got the bonnet view. <laughs> like what kind of a schmuck is going to spend a bunch of time on a game, get something that's not quite right, and then release a, a trailer with it looking really janky and crap <laughs> where your alien jitters around and doesn't actually look very good at all. Yeah, what kind of schmuck would do that? <laughs> they should have held off releasing that. Because every trailer they've released since then. It's been spot on, yeah. yeah. But that one trailer was like, what are you doing? Yeah. Well, then all the other following trailers have been like, oh, yeah, no, this is fine. Um, and I get the whole, you know, not every game is ready for the public. So when they are leaked, then that's not an accurate representation of the game. This This was an actual press release. Yeah. So they, they, that's their fault. It wasn't leaked by somebody that got into somebody's Gmail. It was it was literally their idea. I think there's one more thing I, I want to mention. I can't really... Well, there's actually two more things. One more. And they're both from End Dreams. Um, frenzies. Now, very very strict embargo on this one, but can say I've played it and it's it's fun. It's about as far as I can go. Um, so I haven't played it and I'm not under NDA. I'm not under embargo. <laughs> so what I can say is just complete speculation and, and my own bullshit. But it's a PvP online game. Yeah. That shoots. Will be like all of the other PvP games online where it will have its moment in the sun for about 20 minutes while all the content creators get their first videos out and then nobody will play it. It will be a ghost town again because everybody wants to just play onward. That's that's it. It will have a die hard fan base, then people will dig it for, for a while, it'll just die. I'm sorry, I, I love End Dreams and I wish them all the best. And I hope, I really, really hope I am wrong, but I don't think I will be. So, yeah. When I saw that, I was like, uh, fair enough. I, I, even if they turn around to me and was like, do you, do you want to play this? I'd be like, not really. It's just, I'm, 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 not the, I'm not the target audience for that game in any way, shape, or form. <laughs> I'm not the target audience for that game. So I literally, all I know about that game is what I've seen in that trailer, but the moment I just see an online PvP shooter, I just instantly assume it is going to be a waste of time. And I, I, I hope they don't read into that too much. On the upside, you do see a lot of elements in that game that End Dreams do do right. Yep. So the cover system that we saw in Fract and in Synapse looked present although it looks kind of hectic to the point that you're probably not going to use that a great deal, but it's there, and I like that cover system. That cover system is brilliant. Mm-hmm. So the, I think the game will be technically sound. I think it will be brilliant, and, and all of the elements of the gameplay will be superb. But it's only going to be as good as its community. Because, I mean, it needs to keep a player base, and that's yeah. something that many games struggle to do. Yep. Yes. But even the games, from what I've they struggle to play bases. From what I've played, it's something different in that area. So I'm hoping it will. Okay. Hopefully, yeah. Like I say, hopefully I'm wrong, and it does manage to keep a player base. But I, I think it will just fall on its ass like all the others do. It needs work. Um, it needs the only it other thing needs to do something special. But yes. you've got to think these games that have come out and. Shooters that'll come out and stole things. Population one, for example. I think that's the only issue we might 
faced with that type of game is its audience is well pop one was always you see the thing with pop one is it was the closest thing we had to fortnite so it you either have to be the first to market with your thing or you have to be the best mm -hmm. cannot be mediocre and they're not the first to market so they have to be the best and the thing is most people that play online shooters want onward and this is not onward so maybe they'll maybe they'll pull it out maybe it'll be just a a secret uh, hit and and i will be happily very very wrong but they're not they're not going to be the first um we've seen so many different games even mildly unique games come to market in this area and fall on their ass Ubisoft tried it with Space Junkies. I think Space Junkies uh, fell in its ass because of its price. So. Yeah, it was poorly priced. And the thing is, I get why Ubisoft priced it at that, because they put a lot of time, effort, and R&D into it. But it was wasted time, effort, and R&D because the, the market is where it, it, it needs to be. And it's that price point in VR, you cannot get away with it. Um, gravity... The grapple, grapple, shooty, shooty, arsehole game. What was that called? Grapple shooter? Grapple, I know what you mean, yeah. Grapple gun. Fantastic. New premise. You're grappling around, you zip off, shoot, 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 shoot. Didn't control its community, and it fell on its arse. Well, I can imagine because... if it takes off, End Dreams will manage the community there you go grapple tournament didn't control its community fell on its ass because i mean i think End, uh, i think end dreams would manage a community well though i don't think they'd just let yeah, it go no, to they ruin would. they would but there's these games require just so much time effort and attention and who's got time for that uh larson or so book keeps going on about that was the um first contact that was the firewall people they made that game, and it was just kind of generic. Um, the crap one that Nathy was in, oh, shit, what was that? That was a 1v1 shooter, which you could play on mobile and on the yeah. Oculus Go. Yeah, what was that called? Oh, my God, I know what you mean as well. It had a big studio behind it as well, didn't it? Who was the studio? Mike was in it, too. It was, it was fun, actually. I quite liked it. Um... Oh my god! What was it called? I'm I you you killed me now. I'm going to have to to look into that. But yeah, all of these games have come and gone because they just can't maintain a community. Firewall only did well because it was the first to market and it didn't really have competition. But then when they were last to market on the PSVR two, it fell on its ass. That's Firewall. It had a massive community behind it. So I, I worry is, is, I guess, what I'm saying for that one. I do worry. Um, but if, if anybody can do it, then surely it's End Dreams. Hopefully mm -hmm. it's End Dreams. And I, I hope they're rewarded for their efforts. Not every game is going to be a winner. Mm -hmm. But I, I hope that one goes better for them. But as you were saying, also, End Dreams, they're also bringing out Fract on the yeah. quest. Mm -hmm. yeah. Which I, there are, so I've naturally, we were doing the slightly heroes. There you go, book. Well done with the save. You, to be fair, you also cursed us with it. So you know, well done for <laughs> digging yourself out of a hole. Um, but yeah, no. So we were doing the VR Souls when Fract One was released, and I was looking, and then I bought that mid show. Yeah. And then after the show, because I paid extra for the super duper version, I then instantly launched the game and played it and fell in love with Fract. So then when it came to the PC and I could use sticks to control, I was very, very pleased. And I am so happy that a whole new generation of gamers is going to get to experience Fract. Yeah. Because Fract was a superb game. I think on the VR Souls, it was my game I spoke about, wasn't it? And like when you, cause you used to talk about. Our favorite game at yeah, that I don't time. Think I'd heard of it yeah. up until that point. 
I know. And then you sold me on it, and then I bought it and played it immediately after stream. <laughs> and it was, yeah, it was superb. I know we mentioned it. Um, we mentioned it in Frenzies. Is one thing I was glad as well when it came up a PC was, and it had the sticks, because that cover system was made with the PlayStation controls in mind. <laughs> Yeah, that was the thing because you didn't have sticks. They, this is what I was sort of touching on earlier. One thing I miss about the PSVR is it made developers get creative. Without the PSVR and its terrible controller system, you don't get static. Yeah, which was a superb game, and something like that needs to happen again. Yeah, and that's what I think helped Wind and Leaves is because it was clearly aimed at a PSVR controller and you could kind of see it and the the way they get around the limitations of the psvr controller made just pure gold and that's another thing that fract did it got around that limitation and made the best cover system i've ever seen in a game yeah and then they brought it a synapse because it was that popular <laughs> it became yeah. a part of synapse and I think I think somebody should mod it into Half Life Alex. Mm. The thing is, not only is it functional, but like a lot of people, when they saw the first Half Life Alex trailer and they watched the way the game was played by the person recording it, they did key little things that nobody thinks to do when they're recording a trailer, but when you watch it back, you're like, that looks cinematic as hell. So in Half-Life Alex, what there's a part where Alex is walking up to a corner. Normally you would walk up to a corner, you'd press the left stick, and you go, rrr, rrr, and you'd lean out. Whereas in Half-Life Alex, because they can control the hands, they actually grabbed the wall mm -hmm. and then leaned out. And it's a small thing, but it makes a lot of difference. It's very, very subtle, and if you don't care, you just let it pass you by. But it was a really, really big thing. Another small, subtle thing that you don't potentially realize when you're playing Half-Life Alex, when you grab gun things towards you, if it has a handle, it will twist in the air, and then when it lands at your hand, you will be holding the handle. Mm -hmm. It's a dumb little thing, but it just makes it that little bit slicker and that little bit sexier. Yeah. And End Dreams did something with their cover system that looks really cinematic, and it's actually required. So if I was hiding behind a box, I probably would grab a corner and lift myself up. Yeah. And they make me do that in the game to cover. It's brilliant. And it's so functional. I dig it so much. Well, as with, so as with you, I'm very glad that, like you said, more people are going to get to play it now. Yes. That's it. And if... If it's even as like slightly better than the PS4 version that I played way, way, way back when, it, it, it's, it's perfect. It's brilliant. It was superb on the PS4, and I never had the, the PS4 Pro. I had the basic scream at me because it was remotely warm PS4, and it was superb. So, yeah, I'm... I'm if the Quest version is even on par with the PS4 version, you're going to lose nothing. It's going to be brilliant. Yeah. And that comes out in two days. Two whole days? I think it's the 29th, oh, actually. There we go. If it comes out. I, I would Google it, but that would be too easy. <laughs> uh, there was other things on there that... I mean, the stuff we've already seen, like Mannequin, Into the Radius 2, um, Silent Slayer... The, the stabby Dracula game. Um, they were all on there as well, just to kind of remind you that they existed or that they're maybe leaving because Mannequin was on Outlab at, at, at this point. It's not even full store. So um, that's got plenty more to go and it does have a lot of work to do. When I, I think last played, um, it definitely needed yeah. more. Silent Slayer was like an accolades trailer, really, wasn't it? And, yeah. Uh, which I was included in. I've got some accolades for it. <laughs> I did. I did see all of the the names they were dropping, and and um, did you even know that they were going to put your name on there? No, there was two in there that had my no name idea. on, and I had no idea that I was going to be on any of them. So yeah, that's. Um... I mean, nothing against them. They did actually reach out when they sent me something ages ago, Shell, and I'm like, do you mind if we use this 
you're quoting something and i was just like no that's fine i said don't even ask me in the future just if you want to use something i've said use it <laughs> so yeah <laughs> so i was recently on the steam page for no king no kingdom i've been running i'm probably possibly even still there now there's a big ukrainian game push mm. the developer Ukrainian, and it's one of those things that if anybody is this is just a blanket statement if anything i have ever done you want to use it to promote your shit fucking go nuts yeah because <laughs> if i don't like it i will have said i don't like it so if you've got something that says i do like it i mean that so yeah go for it i've got no problem with people using my crap to to shill your game um, it's, it's absolutely fine. I'm not that big that I'm like, yeah, and I want £500 for doing it. Um, I don't know whether I, I... I don't... The only way I would charge people for that kind of stuff is just that if I get that much of it that I can't keep up. Like yeah. I've got so many... I've got devs reaching out to me, and I'm, I'm terrible anyway. Like, I need a personal assistant. But I've got Des reaching out to me, asking me to play stuff, and it's getting to the point where there's that much that I'm saying yes to that I need to figure out a way of saying no. And the only way I can think to do that is how much are they going to... Like, oh, we'll give you a £100 play our game and give us feedback. Okay, yeah, they're offering me £100, so I'll play their thing. But then, I, I don't know, I need a system or a PA or uh, I, uh, the ability to organise things. I don't know. I think I it something. was... Um... Cyan Games reached out to me and was like, can we use your quote on our racket? Can we use your score on an accolades trailer for um, Riven? I was like, I'm going to say no to you. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I would never. I would never, ever, ever say no. Um, not to them. Yeah, I was like, I'm not no going to say no. I, I hate it. The, you know, with the, the tech issue, we can maybe run a little bit late, but it is, it's about that time. Mm-hmm. Um, any other last minute? I mean, what else was there? The Ghost of Tabor people have got two announcements in there. One that looks like Ghost of Tabor, but on Mars. And then a game that's called Silent North, which I got the impression it was like World War Z, or not World War the, the Z. Yeah, basically the two games they announced. Yeah. Obviously, the Ghost of Tabor is basically Tarkov in VR. And the... What was the other one? Is like, the other one's um, Grim is basically Rust in VR, and Silent North is Daisy in VR. So basically, they're just making VR versions of popular games. Which honestly, like, screw it. Could, yeah, good on them. It, yeah, so that's it. what I mean. Good on them. They're not my yeah. type of games. A bit like, yeah. so I probably won't bother yeah. with them. But they're popular for a I reason. Do it. Is a game that I have friends that are like, will you play this game? I was like, I don't own it, but I'll buy it because screw it, yeah. Um, but I kind of enjoy my time in it. Like, it's not full of that many. There are some people that you just literally walk around and you're dead for no reason. But most of the time, it's kind of okay ish. So I think I'm in a situation which we discussed earlier. We go to the bar, tried it like a few days after it came out, and it was so janky. I just went right, uninstall that shit. Yeah. Like, you take your backpack in and it might not come with you, and then you lose everything you just put in your backpack in the thingy and things like that. Right. And I was like, ah, bollocks of this shit. I'm not, I'll turn it, I'll delete it. I did live through a wipe, which was uh, frustrating because mm -hmm. I just like, oh, yeah, I'm, st I'm really starting to find my feet and I'm getting a bunch of stuff together now. And then they wiped it all. Mm -hmm. That was annoying. So, yeah, that, that kind of put me off the game a little bit, but I'll go back in. Um, band space. We've seen a lot of that at Gamescom lately. That's some content that I'm absolutely fine looking at from Gamescom because, let's face it, it's just rock band in VR. Yeah. Um, and what made rock band it, special? It, the actual playing the instruments. The, yeah, the instruments. The actual, the, controls. Yeah, the actual peripheral instruments, not. So, and even that that fell on its ass. Mm -hmm. It got tired quickly. Yeah. Um, yeah, other than that, it was... Now, they did announce the Indies and Friends showcase coming up the 25th of September, I think. Yeah. yeah. Now, whether that's going to be indie VR games or just indie games, I don't know. Hopefully, it is like a, an indie, because the indies need love. They do. I think it's going to be indie VR, surely, because it was on a VR showcase, and it's Jamie and that behind it again. You would imagine so. So... 
So we've got that coming up, and there are plenty of indie games that need spotlights. I mean, can you imagine going out, buying a VR headset in 2018 and thinking, I want to make a really good mini golf game. And then 2020 came around, and they've been plugging away and doing a little bit on weekends because they've got a day job. Mm -hmm. And then 2020 came around, and then, you know, somebody released Walkabout Mini Golf. And now, four years later, you've slaved away and you've got this this mini golf game come out, and nobody gives a shit. This walkabout exists. Mm -hmm. Like it must be heartbreaking. So hopefully, they shine some light on some of these indies that that maybe are going to be overshadowed by yeah. by bigger games. So I'm looking forward to seeing that. Um, well, I say I'm looking forward to seeing that. I'm going to be out of the country at the time. So next month the show might include me it might include me and a special guest in the chair next to me or it might be paul and somebody else we yeah. don't know yeah. it will make it work in some way so we'll see what happens there but i'm i'm um yeah, that, that'll come next month, and that will be the 25th, is it? 22nd? I Bring the calendar up, it'll be the 24th. 24th. 24th of September. And the, the Indie Showcase, I believe, is the 25th, which <laughs> makes sense because you kind of don't want to be competing with um, yeah. Mark Zuckerberg at that time of night. We can get give us something to talk about in... October. October, yeah. Which will be another interesting month indeed, because all of the games that we've seen at Gamescom will be out by then, and hopefully. I think early October we get Metal Hell Hellsinger and Max Mustard on me. Yes, we are too, in the on the same day in the beginning of October. Max Mustard looks stunning. I didn't think it could get better. Mm -hmm. And then it really, really did. It looks really, really nice. Yeah. So looking forward to that. Right. Anyway, did we get any questions? I don't. I don't I even think we. Our usual question person just ran away. Um. I. Uh, yeah, yeah, well, hopefully. Sort of ran away. <laughs> yeah. They're not available to attend. They're currently unavailable. Yes. Yeah. Um. So yeah, we've got no bowl or thirteen in the chat at the moment. I think they're uh, currently otherwise engaged. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, I did. We did have a lovely trip of the weekend. I was going to bring that up earlier, and then um, the moment passed. I did go and do um, Mario Kart in real life at the weekend, which was absolutely awesome, and apparently you're going to be dragged to as well. Apparently. So, there you go. Um, yeah, we did Chaos Karts in Manchester, which turns out, same day as Pride... And a nightmare to try and get around Manchester, but um, yeah. So we went to Chaos Carts, and it's it's absolutely awesome. It really is. The go karts are fun, and it's not about being the fastest around the track. It's very gameable. You're collecting gems, you're shooting people, you're using power ups. It's and it's visually impressive as well. So I very much enjoyed the time I had at, at Chaos Carts. I think I've yeah, said... that's what I got Was it closer to the arena? Uh no. Yes. Mm. Wait. It's near the gay village. As we later found out. Uh which arena is it in, in it, the AO, AO like arena? Old trash or... The AO arena. So like on the outskirts of Central Manchester. AO Arena. It's 41 miles away. No is the short answer. Wait, no, it's not 41 miles away. Is it 41 miles away? It'll be 41 miles no, away. No, the AO it? Arena is a mile away. Okay. Or eight minutes if you were to start travelling now. Because I stayed in the... There's a car in place over the road from the arena, and I didn't know whether that was the one. Oh, yeah, no, it's not that. Yeah. Team Sport Go-Karting Manchester Victoria. Definitely not that one. That one looks like just a bunch of containers and pallets mm. in a car park. No, it's definitely not that. You're inside a warehouse and everything, like the all of the walls, the floor, is all high-resolution projected 
So you turn all the lights on, turn the projectors off, and you're just driving around a mm-hmm. warehouse in go-karts. But once the lights are off and the projectors are on, you're driving around Tokyo, you're driving around space, you're driving around um, uh, a beach. Like, it's it's if Nintendo saw it, I imagine they would start asking lawyers, can we do anything about this? It is very much man- uh, Mario Kart in real life. It's superb. It's an interesting looking roof. I'm on Google Maps and looking at Manchester now. <laughs> it is awesome. I'll stick some I'll I'll maybe try and get some videos uploaded to Twitch. So you can see maybe put it on my uh, Twitch shorts. Mm-hmm. So you can have a look at that. Uh failing that, it's on my Instagram or if you go to Bucks Instagram, you can see what we got up to. Uh some cracking times there. So yeah, good times. Mm-hmm. Do you know what else is a really good time? Go into, reading all the news say, go, reviews. Go into the VRL.com. I was going to say that as well. <laughs> you can go, I mean, feel free to go to my TikTok, but I upload there. I think the last thing I uploaded there was the day after we played. Um, oh, that um, thingy game where you make YouTube videos, content warning. Content warning, I think it was the last thing I uploaded. That's the last, it was the day after we played that, and that's the last thing I uploaded. Um, I've I've got that video on my desktop somewhere. I've still never watched or put mm-hmm. it anywhere. But yeah, I don't put much there. I mean, I stream, of course, right here, and you can find me just babbling crap on. I'll normally promoting stuff from my website on my Twitter because it's really what I use it for. Them. <laughs> yeah, that's it. And you can find me here on Twitch as well. Uh, Dr. Oculus VR uh, on X, Dr. Underscore Oculus, and you can see this show repeated over on YouTube at Dr. Oculus VR as well, where we have the video playback. Yep. We'll mash it all together in one, as well as catching it anywhere you catch your podcasts on Apple, on YouTube, on Amazon, on Spotify, um, and all other places yeah. that basically pull basically from Apple. You mm-hmm. upload it to Apple, and it goes everywhere. Yep. That's it for me, I think. That's it for me as well. It's been a good show. Yep. So thank you, everyone who's jumped in. Goodbye, everyone. Until next month.